Phyrexia has been extremely patient, respectfully waiting while Bola set his master plan into motion. Professional courtesy. When that failed, it was their turn. Mirrodin has fallen, but it's only the first. Soon, very soon, all will be one. This is Phyrexia, so naturally there are going to be a lot of artifacts. And this time, they're in white-blue. There are two main types of payoffs. Cards that care about how many artifacts you control tend to be more control-oriented, as a longer game means you can build a bigger board of artifacts. On the other hand, cards that trigger whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control tend to be a bit more tempo-based, asking you to snowball artifacts every turn while you keep the pressure on. Now, these do play nicely together, and your white-blue decks will probably feature some of each and have to pivot between playing control and playing tempo, even in the same game. But it's important to know which payoffs you're working with to inform which enablers you may want. For example, disposable artifacts like Malkator's Watcher, Dune Mover, or the Spell Bombs work well with the Enters the Battlefield payoffs. But if you're working with cards that care about how many artifacts you control, you want things like Equipment, or mana rocks, which tend to stick around for a while. Mites are great with both kinds of payoff, so be on the lookout for Basilica Shepherd, Charge of the Mites, Infested Flesh Cutter, and the mightiest of them all, Skrelv's Hive. Now, you may be asking, can I play a white-blue Flyers deck? And the answer is yes. Between Basilica Shepherd, Flensing Raptor, and Quicksilver Fisher, there are solid options at common, and it just gets better from there. Just remember that tempo decks like this rely on cheap tricks and removal to keep your opponent's creatures from racing you, so be sure to grab some copies of Ossification, Planar Disruption, Chrome Prowler, or Serum Snare. Blue Black's theme for this set is Proliferate, if Venser and Voidwing Hybrid are to be trusted. Which I guess they're not, because Phyrexian. But whatever, Takuthal and Scheming Aspirant are also great reasons to start proliferating. But what kinds of things should you proliferate? Well, as this set makes history by being the first premier expansion without plus one plus one or minus one minus one counters, you're going to have to stick with oil counters and poison counters, and loyalty if you get lucky. But that's not a problem because they are everywhere. Black has lots of toxic creatures like Blightbelly Rat, Pestilent Siphoner, Stinging Hivemaster, and Nimrazor Paladin. Blue has oil counters on Glistener Seer, Icor Synthesizer, Font of Progress, and Tamiyo's Immobilizer, and they both have cards to kickstart your opponent's infection in case Toxic isn't getting you there. Prologue to Phyresis, Infectious Inquiry, and Vraska's Fall. Finding good cards to proliferate with isn't hard either, considering R&D just slapped the word proliferate onto a bunch of perfectly serviceable cards. Claustrophobia? Proliferate. Rise from the Grave? Proliferate. Anticipate? Proliferate. And that's not all. There's Gataxian Anatomist, Reject Imperfection, Serum Snare, Thrumming Bird, Vivisurgeon's Insight, Blightbelly Rat, Drown and Ikor, Gulping Scrap Trap, and Whisper of the Dross. This color pair has so many options, so there's a wide variety in the kinds of decks that will show up here. One of my favorite is proliferating font of progress into a massive mill engine. But regardless of what you pick, the main through line is control. Most of the cards I've listed play well in a control strategy, so be sure to focus on cards that let you go slow and steady. Phyrexians may be bringing a new world order, but they like sacrificing things just as much as the other guys, so as usual, that's what Black Red brings to the table. Cards like Kethek, Charforger, Vat of Rebirth, and Chittering Skitterling, try saying that five times fast, just love turning your artifacts and creatures into more meat for the grinder. So let's find some artifacts and creatures. We're focused on quantity, not quality here. Stinging Hive Master, Karumonix, Gleeful Demolition, and any Firmiridin equipment provide you with multiple permanents to sacrifice. Death Triggers are another way to get extra value from your sacrifices. Cacophony Scamp throws damage around, Testament Bearer draws a card, and Blight Belly Rat or Gulping Scrap Trap proliferate. You can play this deck in a more aggressive fashion, running low drops like Exuberant Fusling, Sawblade Scamp, and Cutthroat Centurion, alongside combat tricks such as Free From Flesh or Blazing Crescendo. Or you could focus more on value over time from cards like Fleshless Gladiator, Necrosquito, or Churning Reservoir. Phyrexia has melded its love of glistening oil with Red Green's love of massive creatures, resulting in bodies like Cinder Slash Ravager, Miglaz, Evolved Spinoderm, and Lattice Blade Mantis. Green has a lot of interesting ways to use oil counters. Incubation Sack cranks out three threes, Predation Steward pumps your attackers, Evolving Adaptive grows big and strong. Add on Red's ability to just throw counters around. Baby, you got a stew going. 
I mean, just imagine, turn 1 Evolving Adaptive, turn 2 Free from Flesh, and attack for 5. Other good cards here include Poldotha Cackler, Urabrask's Anointer, Oil Gorger Troll, and Iker Plate Golem, which pay you off for having oil counters. And Proliferate is, of course, very useful here, so make sure to grab Volt Charge, Adaptive Spore Singer, or Unnatural Restoration. There are few things in the world more toxic than an MMORPG community, but Green White is one of them. Slaughter Singer makes it clear that our goal is to go wide with might tokens and try to kill the opponent with the dual threat of poison counters and overwhelming numbers. So where are we getting the mites from? Green doesn't have any, but that's okay because white has enough for the both of them. What green does have is a selection of creatures with higher toxicity levels. Branch Blight Stalker, Venomous Brutalizer, Tyranax Atrocity, Paladin of Predation. Any of these are excellent targets for your Flensing Raptor, and there are several other ways to reward your creatures for being toxic. Porcelain Zealot pumps them into must-block threats, Plague Nurse increases their toxicity level, and Complete Devotion and Maze's Mantle protect them from harm. Other great cards for this archetype include Incisor Glider and Plated Onslaught, which pump your entire board, Noxious Assault and Silvok Battle Chair, which make it impossible for your opponent to stave off the poison, and Bloated Contaminator, which is just... <sighs> Dear lord, I should not have to explain this one. White-Black plays in a very similar space to White-Green, focusing heavily on toxic creatures like Crawling Chorus, Flensing Raptor, or Pestilent Siphoner to poison the opponent. However, instead of killing with poison, it's more focused on corrupting the opponent with just three poison counters, which powers up all of its spells to kill the old-fashioned way. Vivisection Evangelist functions as a murder on a solid body, Chittering Skitterling provides card advantage, Apostle of Invasion and Ravenous Necrotitan are massive creatures to finish the opponent off, and Feed the Infection and Phyrexian Atlas drain the opponent's life total. For this strategy, you'll want to focus on cards that accrue value over time. Infested Fleshcutter, Phyrexian Arena, Infectious Inquiry, and Rhea Ivor are great options. Because you aren't trying to kill with poison, proliferate cards go down in value. I mean, obviously you still want to play Drown in Icor, but you can probably pass on cards like Gulping Scrap Trap. Blue-Red is chock full of cards that accrue oil whenever you cast a non-creature spell. Atmosphere Surgeon, Icor Synthesizer, Mercurial Spell Dancer, Trawler Drake, Sawblade Scamp, Vindictive Flamestoker, and Serum Core Chimera. Almost all of these cards feature some form of evasive damage, indicating that you're going to want to try to sneak past your opponent to get the kill. So, what are the best non-creature spells to trigger these abilities? I mean, mainly you want to focus on stopping opposing threats from killing you while you sneak in the back door. You can remove those threats with Mesmerizing Dose, Hex Gold Slash, or Volt Charge, delay them with Serum Snare or Tamiyo's Immobilizer, or stop those threats before they hit the board with Bring the Ending or Reject Imperfection. Cantrips are also great for spells decks because they trigger your abilities without costing a card, and there are several options here. Thrill of Possibility, Prologue to Phyresis, Any Spell Bomb, Experimental Augury. The proliferation on this last one resolves after the oil counters are put on your creatures for casting a non-creature spell, which is Pacha good. For Mirrodin equipment are also solid options because they're effectively creatures, but they count as non-creature spells. Other payoffs include Mind Splice Apparatus, which cheapens your instants and sorceries, Ovika, which creates an army of tokens, and Meldweb Curator, which lets you recast your best spells. If green-white and white-black were both toxic, it stands to reason that black-green is as well. The main difference is that Black Green has a lot of graveyard shenanigans. Black Sun's Twilight, Geth, Nimrazor Paladin, Vat Emergence, Vat of Rebirth, Conduit of Worlds, Unnatural Restoration, and Dross Spellbomb all let you reuse cards that have died. This means that you want to focus on trading with the opponent, so your graveyard gives you the advantage in the late game. Creatures like Bilius Skulldweller, Iker Spit Basilisk, and Necrogen Rot Priest are appealing for their combination of Death Touch and Toxic, creating a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario for the opponent. You can also get good value out of reanimating creatures with Enters the Battlefield effects. Gulping Scrap Trap, Adaptive Spore Singer, or Venomous Brutalizer are particularly good for this. Or you can just reanimate massive beaters like Cruel Grimnark, Sky Scythe Engulfer, or Paladin of Predation. If you need to fill your graveyard, Testament Bearer is here to help. And lastly, Viral Spawning reanimates itself, as it features the debut of Flashback as a deciduous mechanic. Fun fact, of the 134 creatures in this set, only 10 of them are not Phyrexians. 
Half of those are in red-white, the only color pair focused on the resistance against completion. As their text indicates, their lack of numbers forces them to rely on equipment to help them get the job done. This is where the Fermiridin equipment come in. Each one enters the battlefield with a 2-2 rebel stuck to it, which means you can count them as creature slots in your deck. Special mentions go to Hexgold Hoverwings, which pumps all your equipped creatures, even if it's not equipped, and Bladehold War Whip, which reduces your equip costs. Unfortunately, you're probably going to have to recruit a few Phyrexians to your cause. Bladegraft Aspirant cheapens your costs even more, Jawbone Duelist gets double use out of stat bonuses, and Indoctrination Attendant picks up your equipment to let you create more Rebel tokens. Every good deck with equipment needs creatures to carry them. In this set, that includes Mandible Justiciar, Orthodoxy Enforcer, Swooping Lookout, Cacophony Scamp, and an endless string of Mere Kinsmiths. Lastly, don't forget that aggressive decks like combat tricks. Resistance Reunited protects all your equipped creatures, but you can also do work with Plated Onslaught or Blazing Crescendo. Between Azuri, Stalker of Spheres, and Tainted Observer, it's clear that blue-black is not the only proliferate theme in this set. Green-blue features all the same goodies. Spells with proliferate tacked on. Toxic creatures. Oily creatures. It's pretty simple. Find cards with counters, and cards with proliferate, and stick them together. Where this deck differs is in its ability to fix mana. Now, between Dune Mover, Mere Convert, Phyrexian Atlas, Prophetic Prism, and Terramorphic Expanse, any deck can splash without too much trouble. But Green Blue gets access to Armored Scrap Gorger and Thirsting Roots, which are right at home in a proliferate strategy. This allows you to run that Volt Charge, Voidwing Hybrid, or even a third main color without having to go out of your way. This is where you want to be when you keep getting past bomb after bomb, which is a situation that I wish I could find myself in. In addition to the major archetypes, there are always a few build-arounds that take you in a different direction. Alesh Norn's Panharmonicon ability has several uses, but it works best to double the removal with Annex Shepherd, Ossification, or Vivisection Evangelist. Karumonix is a Rat Lord. Unfortunately, Chittering Skitterling and Blightbelly Rat are the only other rats in the set, but they're both good in the same kinds of deck as Karumonix, so you might get there. Venerated Rot Priest throws poison every time anyone targets your creature with a spell. That means if anyone hits it with a removal spell, they get a poison counter. If you respond with Tyvar's Stand or Maze's Mantle, they get another. Infectious Bite, two poison counters. Complete Devotion or Blazing Crescendo, poison and draw a card. Seems like a super fun niche deck. And Tyvar Jubilant Brawler lets your creatures use tap abilities as though they had haste. There's not a lot of good options for this. Maybe Predation Steward or Geth? Don't get me wrong, his other abilities are useful, but don't go thinking you're going to break the game with his static. Finally, I'd like to talk about the best commons in each color, just looking at the cards in a vacuum. This is helpful when you aren't sure where your deck is heading, so you can simply choose one of the generically best cards in the color, as they're usually solid in any deck. For white, our number three is Duelist of Deep Faith, which is a strong, aggressive creature that also poisons the opponent. A grizzly bear with first strike at common is unprecedented, even when it only has first strike during your turn. Basilica Shepherd seems incredible, giving you a solid flying body as well as two might tokens, which most white decks can make good use of. And Planar Disruption is astounding. I mean, they took a rest, and they just made it cost pacifism mana. They are really pushing the commons in this set. Moving on to blue, Bring the Ending is a solid pickup because this format has a lot of early aggression focused on getting early poison through, and a cheap counterspell is a good way to curb that aggression. And number two, Quicksilver Fisher boasts impressive stats for a flyer, as well as a useful enters the battlefield effect. But the number one spot goes to Mesmerizing Dose. I mean, Claustrophobia is a good card, and Proliferate is useful in every blue deck, so you can't have too many of these. Black, as usual, comes in with a larger selection of removal. Annihilating Glare is a cheap way to destroy opposing threats, so long as you have a Might or Death Trigger creature to offer up. Stinging Hivemaster is both, and is useful in every black deck, so you'll never be sad to play it. But number one generally goes to removal, and I see no reason to stop now. Anoint with Affliction is very efficient. In the early game, it can kill any creature. In the late game, it's more limited, but... Between its ability to kill rebel tokens, the aggressive nature of the format, and its ability to upgrade itself, this card is no joke. Red's creatures are a little lackluster, but Furnace Strider seems like a solid beater. 
coming in as a 4-5 with haste that also grants haste to your next creature. Large haste creatures are more powerful and limited than they look, so this guy is an excellent curve topper. At number 2, Hex Gold Slash kills 91% of toxic creatures in the set for just a single mana, which is incredible. But I'm going to have to give the crown to Volt Charge for being more consistent damage that also proliferates. Green's number 3 is Lattice Blade Mantis. This creature attacks as a 5 4 Vigilance for 4, so assuming you're not on the back foot, this thing is going to put the pain on your opponent. At number 2, Carnivorous Canopy is a Broken Wings with Proliferate, which would already be good, but as this is an artifact set, it has a lot more high profile targets than it usually would, and instead of being a sideboard card, you can generally include one or two in your main deck and get value out of it. Green bucks the trend here because its number one common is a creature. You remember Midnight Hunt, when the best green common was a 2-3 for 3 that drew you a land? Contagious Vorak ups the ante here with an extra point of power and the ability to proliferate, if that's more important to you than a land. No, it doesn't mill you, but this is still one powerhouse of a common, and I think the best in the set. And as always, don't be afraid to spend a pick on Terramorphic Expanse. Almost every deck benefits from improving its mana consistency at the cost of one mana. This set looks incredible. I had a blast when New Phyrexia came out, so to return to that world and have it be even more spooky and deranged? Well, it all will be fun. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and if you want to see more draft guides like this in the future, remember to subscribe.